Hey, Steve. Ron Baker calling. How are you? Hi, Ron. How are you? I'm doing really good, man. Do you still have a couple of minutes? I have a couple of minutes. Well, I wanted to talk about, uh, uh, you know, this weekend's shows that uh, Kix has coming up, but I also want to talk a little bit about Funny Money because you've that's, been... That's always nice to talk about. Yeah, dude, I understand now why you are so thin. You have got to be the busiest guy in show business between all the stuff you do. Oh, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I've been kind of out of the loop on some of the Funny Money and the Kix stuff because I got out of radio for a little while. I'm just now getting back into it. Uh -huh. Last time I talked to you, I was working in Martinsburg, and you guys were uh, doing a Kix reunion show in Hague. Town, and we talked a little bit about Funny Money. You were about ready to release Skin to Skin. But since then, you have another album out, and we're playing By the Balls from that. And we get a lot of requests for it here. That's great. You know, those radio stations who do have, have enough, uh, enough balls to play an unsigned <laughs> band, that's the one that everybody chooses. They like that, and they like About Women. Yeah, yeah. About Women's in a TV commercial or something, right? Actually, I think that's By the Balls. Oh, is it By the Balls? I yeah. thought I heard about, about Women in a TV commercial. What was it, Geico well, or too. something? T tell us how that whole funny money thing got started real quick, because you, uh, you had an interesting story then about how you actually came up with the name Funny Money. Um, basically, after, uh, after Kicks broke up in 95, um, I was looking to get back into it, but it had to be the right time, the right people, because my, my whole goal after 18 years of, of Kicks was to have a little fun, make a little money. So hence the name, Funny Money. Because at the time you were with the Kicks band, you didn't make a thing. Well, you know, we, we did okay on our live shows, but all the records that we sold and everything, we never made a cent off of that. So all of our income was through playing, which is why we were relentlessly on the road playing all the time, and whatever merch we could muster up. But basically... I left that band with what I started with. Moving on to Kicks, you guys have been doing shows, and you do shows, you do reunion gigs about the same time every year, right around September 11th yeah. and right around New Year's. Is there a reason why you do it those two times a year? I think the first time we did it was, was around the holiday season, and now we pretty much kept it to the September time locally, but this year we've actually branched out a little bit and, and have played uh, New Jersey, Long Island. We did Rocklahoma. We did this Houston festival called Rock the Bayou, and now we're doing these shows, so... We've decided to uh, take advantage of the, of the fact that we're sort of in demand because we haven't been like all the other bands from our genre that's just been out there year after year after year. People haven't seen us play outside of our area in over 12 years. So it seems like there was interest that we weren't aware of. Yeah, I, I've noticed that you guys have been busier. Rocklahoma, you guys did that in the pouring down rain. What was that like? Oh, that was a monsoon. That was awesome. <laughs> I felt bad for the people because obviously the band's protected, but... This, this massive storm with high winds come in and blew over stages and tents, and, and of course, we go on next. Yeah. And this rain just never stopped. I mean, it was one massive monsoon downpour for the entire time we were up there, and the people stayed, and they dug it, and it was amazing. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I read some reviews on that. You guys got one of the better reviews out of that whole venue. Did you get a chance to see anyone else down there? Did you mingle with any of the old uh, Triumph was a, a big deal? Their reunion was a big yeah, deal there. Yeah, I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely hate them, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> okay. On the very, very first album that Kicks went out, we went out to, uh, I believe it was Seattle, Washington, to join the Triumph Tour. It was, it was the Kicks' first major tour on the road, and these guys were such ass. <laughs> I mean, they were just uh, stuck on themselves. We, we went out of our way to buy a Triumph record, which we didn't really care about them, but we you know, thought we'd rub, uh, rub elbows with them and say, would you guys sign this record? We're big fans. And they just looked at us and rolled their eyes and walked by us. And, and we never never got along on the road. They hated us, and we hated them. So uh, never worked. So never <laughs> liked them. They're, they're, they were young, wild, and free to us. They were they were fat, old, and stupid. <laughs> <laughs> now we were talking about some of the music from your genre, the the kicks genre. Uh, bands like Dawkins, L.A. Guns, Warrant, Poison. Even though they kind of copied you guys, Poison making a comeback. I guess with you all know, the Brett Michael stuff. On. To Brett. Oh I, yeah. I saw Brett at the Houston show. And just to let him know that all this chatter about, you know, pointing fingers and, and, and jealousy and all that, you know what the bottom line is? Those guys sold a boatload of records, yeah. and we didn't. So hats off to him, because I know how hard it is. <laughs> Do you think the TV helps him out still, because he's still in the limelight a good bit? Oh, sure. I think that, uh, that uh, show that he's doing has catapulted him back into the limelight, because he headlined the, the night that we were playing Rock the Bayou over Twisted Sister and Us, and um, there were several other bands. And, um, you know, he was just doing his own thing, some poison hits and some cover stuff. And the fact that he headlined with that kind of an arrangement of songs tells you how popular that show is. Yeah. Now, the last time I talked to you, uh, we talked a little bit about Kicks and uh, the possibility of a new album. And you said, no way, no how. But yeah, you, but, I'm, you know, you never say never. Well, you snuck one in on us. Uh, Thunderground? That was, you know, you know that, I had a fan come up to me at a, at a Funny Money show and said, will you sign this? And I looked at it. And I'm like, what the hell is this? 
So that was put out by somebody in no way connected with our band. Oh, really? So yeah. I, I heard that those were just demo records that were actually they songs. They were demos that somehow found their way out there, and somebody held on to them and um, put it out and sold it over the Internet. Well, the production on those, is, it's actually pretty good. Well, that's our production. Those, those were our demos made in our, in our rehearsal studio. Wow. Was that the studio you had up in Waynesboro, Guido's? Yep. Yep, that's the one. Yeah. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I am supposed to tell you hi from Dave Wishard at the Velvet. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he said to say hi because I, I had a chat with him. Also, uh, Wilbur said to say hey, too. Wilbur from the 11th Frame? Yeah, from the yep. old 11th Frame Lounge. You know what? We still get a lot of people calling here saying that they remember you guys from the 11th Frame. Sure. Yeah, everyone's got a kicks story they are willing to share, either from well, the between, 11th Frame. Between the 11th Frame, the Old Mill, and the Mountain View, those were the three main rooms in the area that, that we began our, our, big, our large following around here. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I'm supposed to ask you, too, because a listener called up and he said, whenever you talk to Steve, ask him if he remembers a band called Black Pearl. Sure do. Yeah. Yeah, they were great. Yeah. And uh, he said, uh, you know, to give Steve a shout out. And, you know, everyone wants to talk to you, man. We're going to have to get you in here to the studio and just take some telephone calls. What and... the hell does anybody want to hear me talk for? <laughs> well, you know what? Kix is still very popular around here. I know. Mm -hmm. And, and again, that's, that's due to that fan base that, that we accumulated over the year. And they were the, always the loyal, the most loyal fans. And that's why when we decided to do these Kix reunion shows, it was like, you know, we're all sick to death of traveling, but, man, wouldn't it be cool to give the home, hometown fans a, a dose of kicks once a year? So that's pretty much what initiated it. Yeah, and some of the transplants into the area, you know what? It's great to expose them to your music because even though you guys are known around here very well and you did have that one-hit record, you really aren't that popular nationwide. I mean, no, we're not. A, no, lot, of, a lot of people just didn't get, you know, and here's the basic thing. Here's what I say. I think you guys were way ahead of your time. You say know, that. I hear that all the time. You know what I think? I think Atlantic Records sucked and we, we weren't managed. <laughs> properly until like our fourth album and uh whether we burnt some bridges along the way or pissed some people off we'll never know but hindsight's 2020 and there's not a damn thing you can do about it so you know people ask me do, um how come you guys didn't get bigger do you have any regrets i'm like no i lived a dream i was out there for 18 years living a dream and achieved everything i ever wanted to the only thing i would have liked to have was a fatter bank account <laughs> that didn't happen but i have no regrets yeah, you got to go to Japan, go on the road with Aerosmith, right? Yep, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I, I met everybody. I did everything. I played every arena. I, I saw the world. I saw the U.S. multiple times. So in that respect, it was a huge success. And you guys are starting to get the respect now, I think. I, I saw on VH1 they have you guys ranked within the 100 top rock bands of all time. Yeah, I, you know, I never watch that crap. I hear that all the time. <laughs> also, I, I, I saw a, an article about you as a vocalist, and I don't know, I don't remember who wrote it, but someone ranked you right up there with Plant. Uh, 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 Metajevic and uh, Coverdale as one of the greatest vocalists in rock music. Well, they yeah. obviously drink. <laughs> <laughs> now, are you still doing that, that uh, vocal teaching thing? I am, yeah. yeah. That's what I do uh, in my off time. That's what I do through the week, and then funny money on weekends. Great, man. So, so what's the likelihood of some more uh, funny money stuff uh, real soon? Because that last album was killer. I agree. That, that album came together really good. It had some great songwriting on it, because everybody, every band member contributed and worked hard on it, and uh, we're in the process right now. We've got about 10 songs that we're trying to throw together and started recording just a couple weeks ago to get things going. Wow, that's outstanding. And you're sharing some members between the bands. Jimmy's playing in Funny Money. Mark's yep. playing in Funny Money. Yep. Great, so Mark man. and Jimmy are in Funny Money, and then uh, um, we go out and do the kicks thing together, too. Mark, Mark comes out and plays bass for us. So is everyone from Kicks still local? Is Brian in the area? Last no. time he was in California. Last yeah, time. he's still in California. He flies in to, to do the shows. Wow. So, yeah. And Ronnie's in the area, right? Yep. He's, Ronnie's in, uh, uh, outside of Frederick. And he's got his own gig going on now? Yep. He's got Blues Vultures. Brian actually has Rhino Bucket. And, uh, you know, we got Funny Money. So that's what, we, that's what we truly love doing because it's our own project. And, uh, you know, when we do the Kicks thing, it's, it's Kicks. <laughs> So are we going to have just a, you know, typical kicks, balls to the wall, let's party, throw some beach balls and stuff That's the show this we weekend? Know how to do it. <laughs> oh, I did want to ask you about something. Do you ever go on YouTube at all? Once in a blue moon, if somebody will send me a link to something I should look at, I will. And, but I, I'm... If I get on a computer, it's for a reason not to go on there and play around. Oh, okay. Dude, I go on there every once in a while and check out the old Kicks videos. Yeah. And uh, the one from uh, Loco Emotion. Oh, God. Dude. <laughs> that, is that even a video? That was like a TV show that was shooting. All yeah, where was that? But you're wearing a beach hat. Uh, dude, I didn't know you could play sax. Well, believe me, it's all, it's all smoke and mirrors. <laughs> so, I took one lesson. I said, show me how to make, how to make this thing squawk and show me. <laughs> <laughs> That was that's 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 my uh, saxophone story. Oh wow! Well, all right, dude. I appreciate I appreciate you taking some time out, man. We look forward to the show. Well, same here.
here. We always look forward to coming out and seeing the local fans. And thank you for taking the time to give me a shout. I appreciate it.